All right, Dr. Steve Pachanek is going to be riding shotgun with us for most of this hour. He's got a lot of topics he wants to hit on. I've got a bunch of questions for him to take him in some directions we don't go in sometimes. There is so much happening in the world. I want to ask Dr. Pachanek about this article Paul Joseph Watson wrote last week that links to the major German newspapers. Uh, German government preparing for civil unrest, citizens panic, buy food, warning of national catastrophe. Of course, uh, a lot of our financial guests have been saying that the big German banks are in worse shape than we were in 2007, 2008. And of course, a lot of those problems were in Europe back then as well. Uh, and this is really turning into a serious situation. I want to get Dr. Pachinik's take on Trump going to Mexico and I think a very powerful speech about nationalism and our country's actually working together and not just being looted with one-sided trade deals but also very nationalistic, but also conciliatory. Uh, I want to talk about an article he's written at stevepachinik.com. Tim Kaine, liar, Jesuit, CIA operative with dark past. Because a lot of people have been saying Hillary's clearly very, very ill. And Dr. Pachinik was here about three weeks ago, and he said it needs to be a board, you know, certified group of brain surgeons, uh, a neurologist, pathologist to look at her. Since then, Obama's former doctor went on CNN and said the same thing, who's a Democrat, by the way. Uh, Dr. Drew basically came out and said she looks really sick, and she's taking this armored thyroid and Coumadin. That you take those together, that is just crazy. He said, I just need to talk to her. He was very loving about it. Fired five days later with a popular show. Um, people that wear Trump shirts on TV that are guests are having it blurred out. I mean, they are... I'm surprised, as the head of WikiLeaks said yesterday, and we played the clip, Julian Assange, that the press climate is the old corporate media is, is lying lockstep and enthusiastically cheerleading disinformation at a foam-at-the-mouth level that I don't think I've ever seen even in other countries. I mean, even other big corrupt countries that are under authoritarianism, people kind of begrudgingly write the BS. This is like mind control or something. I, I, is this because they're weak or because they're strong? I mean, they are pulling out all the stops. So that's a lot of issues to cover there, a lot of things to get into. But the reason I got into Hil Hillary's health is exactly what Dr. Pachenik said. It was almost like a talking point. Then the next few days, that was repeated everywhere by other doctors and folks that I guess were just looking at the same information. But then we had to look closer at her VP, Mr. Kane. Because I don't really just judge a book by its cover, but he looks like a power-hungry candy ass to me. Then I researched his background. Total establishment Wall Street. I love Wall Street, but not the bad, corrupt, centralized groups. He's run by the nastiest big corporate groups, just like Hillary is. Those groups are all completely scared of Donald Trump, which ought to be the reason he should be elected for everybody, that the, the claims they're anti-establishment. He also worked with communists and stuff. He's just really nasty. The reason Kane and the Negroponte were in Honduras at the same time while I was doing the devil's work was to create an illegal army. And then it goes on through all of that. Uh, so, so there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of different angles to this. But do they know she has a brain tumor? We know that um, Ted Kennedy had a brain tumor and lived a year or so with it. And from a lot of the doctors I've talked to, including Pachenik, they say a lot of the, our time in the hospital for a year... This isn't just a blood clot and the type of drugs she was given, the things that are going on. It would be in association with a tumor being removed. And then I talked to some sources, obviously, and they said, well, we don't know what it is, but it's serious. And th the rumor is it's a tumor. Whatever it is, she looks really bad. When she came out last week and attacked yours truly and others and, and, and twisted things I'd said, lied about things, said some things that were true, but, but really lied about you know, Stephen Bannon and people, I mean, that, and Donald Trump. I mean, she really lied about them. She didn't look well there. But then she calls into most of the shows now. She can't do press conferences. This is quite a cornucopia here, Doctor, but I want to bam, 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 bam uh, through this with you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure, but I want to congratulate you, Alex, and your uh, audience because she reaffirmed the importance of the Alex Jones show. I have never... In 30 years of my life, heard an opposition give credence to the so-called the truthers, the conspiracy. So we are now the main line. And I want to thank you, and I want to thank everyone else. But let's get to her health. There's no question she has a health problem. I don't want to go too much into detail other than what I already said. She has a real problem. 
central venous thrombosis, as Dr. Drew said and others have said, is a serious, serious problem, both in coagulation and neurological damage. But I want to go to the next element, which I wanted to really examine. Once I hit her, I began to ask myself the same question that you asked yourself and everybody else had. Who is Tim Kaine? And I started listening to him. Now, from my past experience, I want everybody to know I'm not anti-Catholic. Half my family's Catholic. I have treated Jesuits. Now, when I say I've treated Jesuits, I've treated Jesuits on behalf of the church and on behalf of some three-letter organizations. I will not announce who they are, but you can get guess it. When I heard him speak, I immediately realized that he was too a feat, too uh, bombastic in a way that was disingenuous. Everything he said was that I was inspired by the poor people of Honduras. I lived in the mud hut. I mean, it was everything short of uh, debasing himself in front of the church. And in fact, what happened is when I went back to my records and my sources, I found out that, number one, he lived in a very high, sophisticated compound, which had swimming pools, golf courses. He was under security. He was guarded. He had been affiliated with the CIA. Not only Sure, he pushes this kids. narrative that he goes to black churches in America and helps the poor and all this, and it's all a complete cutout, a classic Jesuit program. Well, it is the classical. I mean, what he does is like any sociopath, they combine a lot of lies with some truth. Sure, he probably went to a few Catholic, uh, a few black churches in Virginia. There are a lot of them. But had he literally worked in Honduras to help the poor people? No, he was involved in developing the contrast. The one reason I know this quite well is General Noriega, when I flew into Honduras and then Panama, told me about the entire cocaine scheme when and i have a lot of respect for the ambassador of honduras who was ambassador negroponte who was also affiliated with our intelligence service and one of the top ambassadors and intelligence operatives but when you work with negroponte you're not on the side of the lord you are on the side of the devil that allows us to build up the contras against the sandinistas so does that mean tim kane is a, if a, is an effective operative? No. What it means is he uses his past, confabulates, and then uses his religion to manipulate the people and get to power. You would think this was the holy angel who came and gave us benef uh, beneficence. In fact, he's not. Like many of the Jesuits, they were supported and funded by United Fruit Company, which is a front and a cutout for the CIA. So he, like the Jesuits, who won't admit it, have been part and parcel of the CIA programs. Sure, they go around the even stirring up the communist movements, then rounding them up, controlling the whole paradigm, which isn't that the Jesuit specialty is 360 control, uh, sitting correct. in every political point of the compass. But let's go further. I mean, the Jesuits obviously historically aren't supposed to be pope. We've got this new pope coming in, pushing global government, going after Trump, uh, doing all these things, lecturing everyone about carbon indulgences. And then now you've got this Jesuit VP with Hillary looking like she's not long for this world. We better look into this. Are we seeing a global Jesuit offensive? Even no, the London Guardian no, admitted. No, let me tell you why, Alex. First of all, I've talked about the, the, the Pope Francis for over a year now. I've known the Pope in the late 1970s and early 80s when he was the director of the Jesuits in Argentina under the military coup. He had allowed several Jesuits to be killed, as well as four nuns to be assassinated by the military coup. So once again, what we have here is not a unified entity. The Pope is not relevant to our political destiny. He's not even relevant. No, no, to I America. understand, but they admit that it was blackmail that helped them install him. Correct. That is correct. So what you get here in a unified front is not that their power is effective. It's not. It's, the, it's what you're getting is constant lies that are being used to bring in a lot of... I get it. So they can fight over the power structure they've got that's rotting, but they're not taking over the larger Correct. system. And the key point that you brought out, is the press really getting more powerful? Is Hillary getting more powerful? No, I think you brought out the point that if the press gets more desperate, and in fact, thank God, you were named as Alex Jones, what's happening is that they, the press is finding themselves to be totally uh, eunuchs, ineffectual. And the reason for that is they don't 
have an audience. As you know, CNN has gone from 600,000 at the lowest end back down to 400,000 viewers per episode. And the only time they get a higher amount is when Trump comes up. But the key here is that even if we were to a boycott all of the sponsors of CNN, it wouldn't make a difference because of the way the law is structured by the FCC that allows CNN, which is a dead outfit, to basically receive money from all of our cable inputs. That's right. So, so what People don't know about the carriage rights and all the rest system. of it, but, but, but CNN is a parasite, so is MSNBC, because they've been there so long with the carrying carriage rights that they get part of your cable bill, folks, even Correct. though you don't watch it. I, I think you have to reemphasize that because, again, this is, an, this is an example where no matter how much we protest, and we discard it, and we want to avoid the sponsors. They just leave it up as a facade to make us think we're not winning. Correct. But in fact, we are winning. And the, the point of fact is if we were to dis disconnect all of the cables and cut them through, eventually the cable companies would understand that they no longer can afford to pay Ex cathedra, the amount. So, what you're saying is they're already dead. They know they're dead, but now Correct. they're going to strike back. That's what I wanted to ask you next. We're going to break, sir. They're openly announcing all these new terms of service, uh, Chinese-style uh, web IDs uh, for, for what your social standing is to economically impact you negatively if you don't submit to the system. Open announcements of wanting to censor the Internet. I don't think it's going to work. I think it's going to no. backfire. But I want to ask you, who wrote Net Force with Tom Clancy and more, and predicted so much of this, what would happen? Dr. Steve Pachenik, stevepachenik.com is our guest. Hope folks are listening up because a lot of times he gets, you know, Homeland Security visits after he's on because this guy is one of the most famous spies out there. We'll be back. Stay with us. Now, to show you how InfoWars is leading the charge, I've been pointing out for several years that George Soros is heavily involved. That George Soros has been heavily, 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 heavily involved in trying to take over the Internet in free speech. And here's our report from Monday where we broke it down. You guys go back to what we just had on screen. I can show TV viewers. UN and Soros plan to take over the web. Now, today, it's up on Breitbart. But look, breaking, UN George Soros to take over the Internet. As alternative media continues to rise, the elite prepare to shut it down. That's August 30th from August 29th on the live show. And the only reason I show you that, again, is to not toot our horns. They're after us because we go read the documents. We know their plan. We know what they're up to. Leaked memo, Soros Foundation, eyed stronger Internet regulation in TPP negotiations. And it goes further than that. He wants it scripted in the memos to where his organizations get the traffic and we're not even allowed to get it. It's redlinked on drudgereport.com. But now we go to Dr. Steve Pachinik. This is a short segment, long segment coming up, Doc. As an information warfare guy yourself, former head of psychological warfare at the, at the State Department, what would you expect them knowing their modus operandi to do now that corporate media is imploded, repeater media is imploded, uh, they're intensifying propaganda, it's not working, they're going crazy, they're openly trying to say, let's arrest global warming deniers. Let's take over the Internet. Uh, Hillary emails say that, uh, say that you know, Breitbart and, and alt-right has no right to exist. I mean, this is final solution talk. What do you think is being bounced around that we don't know about? Well, I think what you're seeing happening is the complete desperation of a very ineffectual system. When you talk about George Soros... I've met him and I've seen him at the Council on Foreign Relations. He's antiquated. I mean, you're really talking of the past. He can put all the money he wants, and, and he's actually not that brilliant. This is one of the few Jews, what we call a Judenrat, who worked with the Nazis, and he knows that. Once you have that kind of backup system, once you have the corruption of the Clinton Foundation, once you have the corruption of the media, the corruption of the Department of Justice and FBI, we have, in effect, a de facto state of revolution without having to go to guns and without having to go. So we go back to your soft coup that took place four years ago. Where are Correct. we now? But this is, this is exactly what you and I used to talk about, and you kind of warned me correctly. 
But this is the revolution that we talked about. It is an amazing revolution, which in, a, in part I kind of predicted a net force would happen 30 years ago through the Internet and through somebody like an Alex Jones who was able to articulate what the reality was, and then that reality would be attempted to be distorted, changed, transmuted, but never once will they touch you, Alice. I can assure you of one thing. No one will touch you. Well, you've been telling me that for 15 years, and it's been true so far. How do you know Nobody that? Nobody is touching you because I'll tell you why. As much as you and I may hit the system, the system being the internal security of our military and intelligence forces, there are many who are with us who cannot say that they're with us openly. There are many of us, many of them who say to me, go on. They've never seen me. And they recognize me from my voice or they recognize me from my presence on Alex Jones. But the truth of the matter is America is now in a new kind of revolution. The Clintons don't get it. Soros doesn't get it. The CFR doesn't get it. Brandon, Bannon gets it. Trump gets it. Brett Bart gets it. You get it. And what happened is without gloating about it, you have succeeded and we've succeeded. Well, our listeners have. I mean, absolutely. Drudge has been right at the center of it. And it's not about credit. It's about understanding where we are to gauge it. So this is definitely happening. And they now admit they're in deep trouble and hate the narrative we're putting out because it's, it's accurate. We're going to break well, in one minute. How do you expect them to counter it then? Well, they're going to counter it. They're very limited in their, in their panoply of, of choices. In other words, they don't know exactly what they can do. They can, they can uh, de deflate us. They can delegitimize us. Misrepresent. We saw that with Hillary saying, oh, my God, he talked about, he being Alex Jones, talked about Sandy Hook as a false flag. Well, you and I know that it's a false flag. Millions of people know that. James Let's Trace talk about that when we come back. That was next. Had to go to court. So the issue is they can no longer appeal to the audience that is now well-versed in the Internet, the reality, or what we call the alternative. That's right. Stay there, Doc. You're absolutely right. It's not InfoWars. It's not Drudge. It's not Pachinik. It's that we're all just manifestations of people that know the score. Look, it is surreal. I don't want to be gonzo journalism. It's not about sitting here and talking about ourselves and saying we're having this big effect. But listeners need to understand that what Dr. Pachinik was just talking about that they're going to have big trouble moving against the liberty movement, whether it's Matt Drudge or Stephen Bannon uh, or myself, because when you get into the actual groups and organizations and people that actually do the targeted killing, as it's called, uh, they're almost all our listeners. And I'm not going to get into inside baseball, but you name a general of the last 10, 15 years that ran sideways with Obama or even Bush, and they're dialed in. And, and the military itself, I don't mean some new cadet or some new, uh, you know, private in the Army or something, but I mean people that have been in combat, been involved in everything, they, they've got the big picture. And we were just one part of decompartmentalizing that. Now, because these people are on the inside and the outside, now that they've already got the accurate of n n narrative, they're adding more to the narrative than we even add now. And so the battle space is getting very, very clear and the growth curve has now spilt into the police departments, who we've been big critics of the problems of the federalization and, and, and constitutional abuses. But the point is, the police now are ridiculously awake. And so as this growth curve, almost like a virus spreading, but a good virus, grows, I don't see how they put it back together again. And I'm not trying to be too positive, okay? I'm not trying to be too positive on the face of this. But when... When... When you experience the things I've experienced, it's incredible. And again, I don't lionize all the veterans. I don't lionize current people in the military. And I don't lionize the Secret Service guys on problems or local police or whoever. But you can't ignore the radar ping when you've even been a critic of the police state. But because you're against George Soros and the destabilization campaign and the overthrow of the country, that whether it's state police in Ohio or whether it's the Secret Service, or whether it's war heroes, you know, you name it, people that have been in the military for decades, famous in those circles, and they are huge listeners and tell you basically everybody else is, that is a major radar ping on the fact that the mainstream media kept pretending like it was the only game in town, shoveling BS at people. It lost all credibility. It demonized us. All it did was send more people here. 
and now they've got this huge problem on their hands because this information is pr proliferating, and I don't see what they do, Dr. Pachinik. I mean, I, I know I'm kind of belaboring that, but it's really the big news that they are in trouble. And when Hillary was talking about our liberty movement, our Americana movement, she looked legitimately really pissed and, and like she was being forced to eat rotten meat. I mean, as a psychiatrist looking at her in that speech last week, her alt-right speech, her most important speech, she said, what did you garner from it? And, you know, the script of my dark heart and all this. What is your view as a psychological warfare expert? Well, my view is now we have to be exceedingly careful because we've wounded the lion and the lion is wounded and will strike out. The lion will not strike out against us again on the media because they find that that was not effective. And in, in, in effect, what they did was to really raise your profile and Drudge and, and Bannon's and, and the others. So they, they either understood that or didn't understand it. If I were they, then they would have to go around with their huge connections and that they've compromised so many people, including the director of the FBI, Loretta Lynch, the FBI itself, the Secret Service. I mean, most of those institutions are so highly compromised. And, uh, and what they're going to do is going to the ballot box, which is what you said many weeks ago, and that is we have to monitor the ballot boxes to make sure that there isn't anything going on a la George Washington, uh, the, uh, George Bush, and Bush Jr., and Jeb, because they're tied together. The, the Bush and the Clinton families are tied together. All of these families are tied together. What's happening in effect, if we, we have disintegrated this incredible uh, lattice of corruption and instability and in put in place a totally different game. Now you see Obama, he's nowhere to be found. I mean, he's in China. Do we really need him in China? No. Has he accomplished anything in eight years? I said from the day he came in, he would do nothing. He would lie and he would be ineffectual. And in fact, we've had more false flags with Obama than anyone else. Now we're going to have Hillary. She may pull a false flag again another type of a false flag, and in turn try to divert the attention away from the, the conversation and the narrative to make it look as if we have another problem, either a terrorist problem or a crisis in the government or some crisis overseas. Right now, we're in a position where the next couple of weeks, she is isolated. She has been isolated for such a long time that in effect, she's in a bubble. And that bubble has reinforcement from the people around the human Abedin and all of the other people, Jake Sullivan. None of them are really that effective or that smart in national security or in psychological operations. Well, let me raise this, sir, and then I want to play a clip for you. I'm sure you've seen it. Have you seen the clip of her a few weeks ago in Reno? When a woman like 50 feet away just yells something about animal rights and Hillary looks like an insane bag lady. No, I hadn't, I hadn't seen it. And, and, then the, and then the doctor, the black doctor with the EpiPen runs up and goes, it's okay, it's oh, all yeah, right. that one. That's correct. Well, let's play this clip because as a psychiatrist yeah. looking at this, I mean, I'm a lay person, but she clearly goes out of it for a minute. Like when you've got, you know, a 90-something-year-old grandmother, she goes out of it and then comes back. I mean, it clearly, she looks like the definition of a loon. Uh, let's play the clip. No, you okay? Keep talking. You handle it. We're not going anywhere. Okay. Keep here talking. We are. You're okay. And, 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 of course, there's hundreds of these clips, but... She's got a handler there that brings her back to reality. She looks like she's about to fall down until yeah, I he... I remember that. I have seen it. But remember, let's not focus on the specific point anymore. The issue of her health, mental health, and physical health has come out loud and clear. They understand that they have to keep her isolated and insulated. In, in contrast, you hear Trump going, I mean, it was really quite a coup for him to go down to Mexico, but more importantly, he went down with Mike Pence to Louisiana. Even the, the President of the United States didn't have enough uh, intelligence or enough 
even need for optics to understand that it was important for him to go down Louisiana. Hillary didn't go either. What does that say? No, no, no. no. What it, uh, Hillary is totally isolated. She's non-functional. What she's functional on is to raise money internally, which means basically, help me, help me. She's in a highly... So she's a figurehead they roll around in a, in, in a, in a jar, like Drudge said. Correct. She is highly, probably more immobilized than people realize. They're trying to feed her and prop her up. The real issue now isn't Hillary as much as it is the entire movement represented by the Clinton Bush Foundation and all the other elements, including, you know, uh, Kane and including the FBI, Comey and Loretta Lynch. They all have to go and they will go. The point of fact now is for Trump to have a uh, a, a team that is quite strong in domestic policies and in foreign policy. If he can announce those, that team and bring it out and make sure that they're well vetted, because that's one of the key elements, then he gets he gets ahead of the game. By the way, Dr. That's Schoenig, let me ask you this question. Trump is so dialed in that the day he flew down there, I know he didn't hear this from me, I was saying we, no one knows what's going to be in his private talk with the Mexican president, but I'd say let's work together as our economies. Let's do good deals. Let's not let globalism screw us over anymore. And then it turns out that's what he says to the president. And, and reportedly, the president came out with a good body language and then later said nice things. And now, uh, you know, Trump says it really went well. I mean, that is very presidential that Trump so dialed in on, say, on such the patriot page that, that, that I mean, he's just doing everything right. That's correct. But now he has to continue that the debates will determine only one part of the final solution, as you call it. The real concern I have is that the voting machinery and the voting uh, software has to be monitored by our people and has to really be evaluated as to what happens. It's the old Stalin a routine. He can say, I don't care who votes and how many times you vote. I care who controls the voting machinery. And that's really where we are now with the Clintons, because they will do whatever they need to do to get her in there. And then once they get her in there, then the entire team of cockroaches just moves in. And it'll be a repetition of Bill Clinton and Obama. And once again, Hillary does not have a very impressive team. They're just not. It has nothing to do with Democrats or not. Well, won't Democrats. she be compromised by all these foreign powers from the Saudis to the uh, Chinese that have been b buying her and selling her like a cheap prostitute? Correct. And she, she and Bill have been so compromised by the Chinese all the way back when I was in the Bush senior administration and the Chinese were buying off Tyson's Chicken, Purdue, uh, Walmart and Bill. And that was part of their own plan. The Chinese have come in with billions of dollars. She's been bought off. The Saudis have had her. The point of fact now is that we can literally impede that sure. by literally saying... Why, no. why, well, why has good parts of the government allowed the president and his co-president to become basically a $5 whore that's passed around by foreign governments. I mean, that just you sounds... You know, it's the old concept of the pension. When I asked a lot of my people that I knew in the CIA and in other intelligence organizations, why did you allow 9-11 to occur? And the answer from two of my friends, I can't identify them, and the CIA said, Steve, it's sad, but they wanted their pensions. And the truth of the matter is we can no longer have people in the government who have 20-year pensions and up and out. We will have to reformulate that so that, in fact, their contribution to our country is not their pension. Well, they ought to plan. use their head. You let evil like this in, you're never going to get your pension to begin with. Unless well, you destroy the, the whole point, country. Well, the point is, you know, with a 20-year uh, lead time, I can, have all, I can buy off so many people that it's unbelievable in the foreign service, in the intelligence service, in the and and now we can no longer afford that. So when Trump comes in, he has to look at that type of uh, mindset and that type of financial uh, model. No, no, I agree with you. Now, now we got to move quick here. Since you mentioned the Hillary speech, uh, here's where she attacked yours truly. Now I want to be clear. I have said that clearly it's a false flag. They've got adults that act like actors. Blue screens with Anderson Cooper. Uh, the media never attacks my points because I want them to hit my pieces of proof that Bloomberg sent an email out the day before activating his gun groups for something big to happen the next day. 
that they were all ready, that they got circles of kids going in and out of the building, that a guy in camo was grabbed in the back, but they covered that up, and, and then they didn't send emergency choppers, and they didn't send ambulances for hours. All of this went on. I'm saying it should be investigated. The whole thing, now, now you've said it's a total false flag. My point is they just stalt it and say, well, when he says 9-11, he means the firefighters blew it up. Or when he says Oklahoma City's a false flag, he means, you know, the little government did it, not criminal elements. Same thing with Sandy Hook. Very suspicious to me, but you're a smart guy that has, you know, run false flags, obviously. You're saying it has all the telltale signs. I want to get your take on this clip. Here it is. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. He even said, and this really just is so disgusting, he even said the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre were child actors and no one was actually killed there. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how dark their heart must be to say things like that. But Trump doesn't challenge these lies. He actually went on Jones's show and said, your reputation is amazing. I will not let you down. This from the man who wants to be president of the United okay, States. Okay, so, so I mean, just uh, taking away from this, I, uh, not even responding to what she does there. This is a lady who brags about, I came, I saw he died. Hundreds of thousands die. They ship Al-Qaeda and ISIS into Syria. They kill Christians by the hundreds of thousands. She lies about being a war hero, being shot at, you know, in the Balkans. And she holds her heart, this little old lady. It'd be one thing if she really was a little old lady saying I have a dark heart. Maybe I do compared to a little old lady. But she's not our average little old lady, is she, Dr. Pachinik? No, what she is doing is what I have called the fascism of the left. She is literally repeating the lies again and again, like Herman Goering has said and Goebbels said it very clearly that if you repeat something many, many, many times, it eventually sounds like the truth. In fact, she knows it's not the truth. She knows Eric Holder. She knows Eric Holder was involved in arming the drug cartel. She's well aware of all of this. But the minute she releases a moment of reality, the entire storyline breaks up. So she has a house of cards, literally a house of cards. And if one card is taken away and she legitimizes either the Oklahoma bombing or Sandy Hook, which was absurd, absolutely absurd. And again, it was Eric Holder and Obama. And even if she were to legitimize the absurd videos and movies about killing Osama bin Laden, who already had Marfan syndrome and was an old man, and they found him in, in Pakistan in the most highly secured and most elegant area. The whole nonsensical uh, narrative breaks apart. So she not only destroys herself, she destroys eight years of Obama. Eight well, why did she attack myself and, and, and Bannon and the alt-right when everybody knows Obama talks about us all the time. It says, you know, that guy in Texas, I mean, they know not to say the name for whatever reason. It's not that we need their legitimacy. They'll mention other people attacking them that aren't effective. They don't want to mention us because they don't want to draw attention to the fact that we're really right on target. Well, the, it, it, there's a French ex expression, qui s'excuse, s'accuse. He who excuses himself accuses himself. And this is very true of Obama, who's a pathological liar. I mean, he came up through the way again that she came up, and I can't underline it enough times. The CIA thought they would bring up a black narcissist without a background, without any training, with a nonsensical story, train in Occidental College in Los Angeles, where half of my operatives were tired and trained a lot of people in transcultural. His parents, grandparents were at the East-West Center where Obama is now, a total nonsensical cutout for the CIA, and they brought him into power. She came out of Yale, she works for the agency, so did Bill Clinton, and they are disasters. The agency is not the highest quality institution that we have anymore. In fact, the most professional units we have are the people like James Clapper and the DNI, Director of National Intelligence, who are military, Air Force, who were selected for their intelligence and professionalism, not for their political uh, action. Sure, what would you say about somebody like General Flynn? 
Well, my, I, I, I'm a great admirer of Flynn because I saw him actually work for many hours. I was invited to one of his conferences. He's, a, he's, a, he's an aggressive, he's an assertive uh, individual. Dr. Buchanan, final segment. Stay right there. We're going to come back and hit more of this straight ahead. It's InfoWars. Massive red link at DrugsReport.com. Clinton says... She could not recall all briefings due to concussion, FBI report. So she says she's sick and can't remember things, but she's got the stamina when she gets up out of bed 10 minutes a day and stumbles around. And guys with injector pins are like, it's okay, it's okay. And she's like, about to fall over. But the Associated Press, Reuters, all reporting it. Clinton says could not recall all briefings due to concussion, FBI report. Print that off for me, guys. I'm going to be uh, covering this more with Anthony Gucciardi in the next hour. Labor Day, Barry, FBI, releases Clinton email investigation docs. We'll be covering it all weekend. Interviews, notes, more. Lost cell phone with classified info. Thought uh, markings were alphabetical paragraphs, even though she's in the CIA since college. Extensive evidence violating federal records laws. Withheld 17,500 emails. Throws other people's judgment under the bus. Hillary's health defense can't recall after the fall. Meanwhile, leaked memo, Soros eyed stronger internet regulation in TPP that favored himself. And Hillary, now her response is war with Russia. That story is red linked on Infowars.com right now. It just went up, so we'll be covering that in the next hour. Hillary also uh, in 2006 said, let's build a wall to port illegals. But the bigger story is, again, Hillary Clinton pushing war with Russia which is just a distraction overall. We're going to go back to Dr. Pachinik uh, here in just a moment. He's going to be able to do five minutes more with us in the next hour. Then we'll talk to Gucciardi about all the news and clips I haven't played. But when you look at this and Hillary running around, again, saber-rattling, I see it as nothing more as a distraction. We'll talk to Dr. Pachinik in a moment uh, and see what his take is on it. But Paul Watson's got a report on that at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, a pretty big deal. Uh, by the way, I barely plug, as everybody knows, once an hour. Didn't even really do it this hour. I actually have this here because the crew likes to drink it. It's vitamin mineral fusion, uh, organic vitamins and minerals, the full spectrum with amino acids so you can have the more bioavailable. Uh, it's vitamin mineral fusion. When you purchase it, it funds the operation. We now have our bio true selenium, such a key uh, element in electrochemical activities in the body and cell function. It's from the mustard seed. Most sources are synthetic. This is only nineteen ninety five, and similar formulas are like fifty bucks. This is a really good deal, and your purchase funds our operation. So, BioTrue Selenium, our newest product at, with five star reviews at InfoWarsLife.com, and it's our first run. It'll probably sell out by the middle of next week, and folks are really liking it. I get amazing energy from it. Uh, and I knew selenium was key, but man, you take a big old dose of selenium, it is something else. Uh, we also have twenty percent off on vitamin mineral fusion. I should have added that. Uh, we have a lot of other great products at InfoWarsLife.com. We have Hillary for Prison shirts at cost, $9.95, shipping included. That is cost. So $9.95, you get the shirt and for free shipping. I mean, by that, it's, it's, it's included for $9.95. If you wish to buy it for $19.95, there's a button to do that if you want to help fund what we're doing. And believe me, having the funding makes it a lot easier to be able to continue on and not spend all my time having this penny pinch and stuff. I need to get more reporters, more crew. History is happening now. I don't want to contract. I want to grow. And let me tell you, you either grow or you contract. And we're slowly growing. Our reach and listenership is going parabolic, straight up like a rocket. But funding is not. It is creeping along, though growing, uh, not at a pace to be able to match what we need to do. So please, there are thousands of great items at InfoWarsStore.com. We strive to have the very best quality at the lowest price. A lot of times we have the lowest prices. Sometimes we don't. Because there's a lot of bargains out there. But when you purchase high-quality storable foods from us or you get shortwave radios or films or the new film Amerigeddon, get a free bottle of colloidal silver with that, an amazing natural antibiotic, obviously, it helps fund this operation. So whether it's strategic relocation, the film of the book, uh, or super high-quality Pro Pure and Alexa Pure water filters or Alexa Pure Breeze indoor air, air filters, your purchase makes it possible. And then I'm going to celebrate another week in the fight against tyranny with a big old glass of vitamin mineral fusion. We're going to be back to have a final comment from Dr. Steve Pachenik and then the news blitz.
But I appreciate Adam Shinnick holding the last five minutes while I was plugging, but that's that's how we fund the operation, as he knows. You can read his book, see his material, and read his excellent articles at stepachinnick.com. Uh, I'm going to play this special report at the start of the next segment. Hillary threatens war with Russia, and the media doesn't even report on it. From the American Legion, I was reading the quotes of what she said uh, to see this bedraggled sea hag trying to start wars is truly amazing when Russia has the GDP of Italy and China is obviously, in my, my view, the threat. Uh, and that's what uh, people like Trump have said. Uh, but they like to bully a country they think they've got under their control. Uh, that's really what it's all about. She's a Soros globalist. So she just sees another country like Ukraine to loot. What a, what a, what a buzzard-like creature. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop ranting. Dr. Pachinik, thank you for the time. Thank you for the energy. Four more minutes to cover whatever you'd like, sir. All right, let me just say categorically, we will not have any war with uh, Russia, and we will not have any war with China. We are destroying ISIS. Now, the reason I say that is not wishful thinking. Uh, General Michael Flynn, who is uh, in the intelligence uh, community and is highly respected, understands that the intelligence community plus our military community works very closely with the Russian soldiers and Russian intelligence. That's that's never going to change. The whole issue with Hillary is the fact that she has a whole group of neocon Jews and neocon Christians who worked for Bush Sr. and were involved in 9-11. Those are the 50 people who are so-called experts that said that Trump is not qualified. That's nonsense. The second thing that we have is our economy will grow. If Trump comes in, I think it's very important to understand that the most important issue is not just immigration, but it is our economy and the jobs that we have at home. Trump can do that. He is the first president literally in 50 years who's been trained in reading a balance sheet, a cash flow sheet, and understands what it takes to create a business, even if you have to bankrupt that business. That's part of the dynamics of building and creating businesses. I've done 28 of them, and I've had to close down half of them. So anybody who's been in the world of business or creating companies knows that there are all kinds of problems. Hillary has never been involved in anything other than self-aggrandizement, manipulation, collusion, and corruption. And that's true of her entire family, including Chelsea, unfortunately, who I knew and I thought she was a sweet girl. But the worst part of the Clinton family is to corrupt that woman, that young girl from Stanford. But they don't stop at anything. So we have to be aware now. It's going to be even more lethal and dangerous on the part of the Clintons. They will do everything and anything to get that election. They will corrupt the electoral processes. They will change the machinery. They will create diversion. They will create false flags. And in turn, we have to make sure that we are aware that we have situational awareness that our soldiers and intelligence operatives overseas vote early and bring in the votes and make sure those votes are counted. That we're at Let me ask you this because it's so important since you brought this up, Dr. Pachinik. Uh, I come out, say, hey, Trump, you got to watch out for election fraud. He's already on that page, comes out, starts getting the folks ready to be on top of it. Obama says it's ridiculous. The feds aren't involved in elections even though we know we, they are. Then he brings in the EU and the UN and actually has Homeland Security now announcing they're going to seize control of the election. That is sensational. What does that signify? Well, it signifies nothing. The Homeland Security, as everybody knows in the government, is nothing more than a paycheck of an ineffectual people. And it was a disaster. Most of them just bring in their pension and they look... So it's just a new agency declaring itself the commander of everything else. Well, they can, com they can create whatever they want. Uh, basically, Washington is dead. It's, it's, it's functionally inept, and what's happening and why I continue to go at it is we have a devolution of power more than anything else, and that's what they are afraid of. More than anything else, it's, no offense, Alex, Alex, it's not globalism. It's devolution of power. No, no, I agree, that, I agree that globalists are scared of power going back to the people, Correct. back and to local areas. Brexit. As Trump brought in there. You've been hammering it forever, and it's happening. I want to have you back next week if you'll do it on right. de evolution God of power. Bless you, and uh, let's keep fighting because we're there, and it, we need a more, more effort.